live and local with coverage you can count on. This is WNEM TV 5 News at 6. A lot of schools not making the grade. Michigan's Department of Education released its list of low achieving schools. At least six local schools find themselves near the bottom of the class. They'll have to take action to improve their performance within 90 days. But there is good news. Two area schools have managed to take their names off the list. WNEM TV 5's Liz Gilardi live in our continuous news center. Liz. Katie and Carrie, the list is based on some pretty basic concepts, including math and reading. Any school on this list not only did poor in those subjects, but failed to meet academic goals and show improvement. Skylar Reed and her mom Stacy took a look around her classrooms for the first time. Skylar is transferring to Thompson Middle School and she's pretty excited. Here I'll make a lot more friends than what I have over there and I'm looking for like a different place to be. There is a difference at Thompson this year. The school is no longer on a statewide lowest achievement list. It's important for mom Stacy Reed, who is more concerned about her daughter getting a degree than her social life. We want them to go to college and they need to learn as much as they can in their first years of school. Last year, would you say that was a wake up call? It was a wake up call um, and it just let it, us, it, it let us know that we needed to step our game up. Um, so we've done a number of things. With the help of a school improvement grant at Thompson Middle, the district increased learning time, encouraged collaboration among teachers, and focused on making students college ready. The strategy helped turn the school around, but the state listed two others in the district as low performers, Reuben Daniels Middle School and Saginaw High School. We anticipated that those schools would be on the list, but now because of the increase of attention that we're giving to those schools in terms of uh, focusing in on their data, we're very confident about where we're moving. We're moving in the right direction. District officials will make changes based on some of the approaches that worked for Thompson Middle School because without a good reputation, they can't attract good students like Skylar Reed. In Saginaw, Arthur Hill is also off the list this time around. As for those low performers that we mentioned, one is actually in line to receive the same grant that Thompson Middle received, so the superintendent is hoping to cross another one of his schools off the list next year. Reporting live and local in the Continuous News Center, Liz Gilardi, WNEM, TV5. All right, Liz, thank you. And we want you want to see where your uh, child's school stands in the rankings? We've got that list at WNEM.com. And we have just learned that an outgoing superintendent from the Kansas City Public Schools could be the next leader of Michigan's statewide education achievement authority system. John Covington stepped down from the district there in a whirlwind resignation on Wednesday. The system would uh, take over Michigan's lowest performing schools. The appointment could be approved as early as tonight. Instructors at Central Michigan University will have to stay in their classrooms and teach. After a court order ended the faculty association strike on Monday, the two sides were back in court today for three hours. The outcome has both sides happy, but what does this mean for students? WNEM TV 5's Brian Wood spent the day in Mount Pleasant and has more. This indeed was a win for the CMU Faculty Association today. Faculty Association President Laura Fry talking about a circuit court judge's ruling today that allows CMU teachers to go back to the picket line but prevents them from striking like they did last Monday. We have had our First Amendment rights restored. Very clear that we never should have had them taken away. We will have a full right to be picketing and gathering on campus as we well should be. After meeting for three hours, the Faculty Association and the administration agreed on many issues, but didn't come up with a contract. That will be left up to a state-appointed fact finder. We look forward to presenting the remaining few issues separating the parties to the state appointing fact to the state appointed fact finder and reaching a new collective bargaining agreement. And the students that we talked to on campus today said that they're glad that the faculty members will be able to return to the picket line and have their voices heard. Hopefully this will help get a contract together now that they've kind of compromised on this a little. Megan Bowerly was one of about 60 students who held a silent protest outside the Isabella County Courthouse all in support of the faculty. We feel like our faculty's First Amendment rights have been violated, so we are out here in a silent protest and show of support for them. And union members say while they're glad they had their day in court, they now look forward to fact-finding. Continue to look ahead 
at a fair, equitable contract for CMU faculty. In Mount Pleasant, Brian Wood, WNEM, TV5. The two sides will meet with the state-appointed fact finder starting September 7th. A live look tonight over Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina as Hurricane Irene gets ready to batter the East Coast and the storm is headed for even more of the eastern seaboard. Chief Meteorologist Darren Bradley is in the Weather Center with a look at that. Darren. All right, thank you very much, Katie. Yeah, this storm is going to impact not only uh, North Carolina where it is going to be making landfall, but this thing is going to be skirting up the shoreline causing problems all the way uh, to New England. Let's take a uh, look at it right now. Sky Tracker showing the uh, hurricane swirling away. Some of the rain bands are reaching into uh, South Carolina and North Carolina, but the uh, eye of the hurricane, the center portion, still yet to make landfall. Here's the latest projected track. Uh, right now, Hurricane Irene at a, a Category 2, uh, meeting winds around uh, close to 100 miles an hour, gusting close to 120. It's expected to make landfall by uh, tomorrow morning in uh, North Carolina and then continue off northward along the eastern seaboard. Uh, some of the issues, in addition to the wind, are going to be the uh, tremendous amount of rain. Look at the rain predictor totals. That swath covering the entire eastern seaboard. Uh, Ten plus inches of rain expected from North Carolina all the way up towards the southern portion of uh, Vermont. So another big issue in addition to the heavy rain is the storm surge. Just a little animation showing uh, how this works. Granted, of course, this is uh, not taking place uh, near uh, Mississippi or Alabama. This is the same sort of thing that hurricane will uh, wind will shove all of that water right towards the uh, shore. So the heavy rain will of course cause lots of problems. And what happens This is called the storm surge as that uh, heavy uh, wind shoves all that wind towards the uh, land. Uh, the flooding will be a major problem all across the eastern seaboard due to that storm surge. So we have the strong winds, storm surge, and of course the very heavy rain. So major problems this weekend for North Carolina northward. We'll talk more about our local weather looking a little more benign here in mid-Michigan. We'll have that forecast coming up. And local medical responders are preparing to lend a hand in case of devastation on the East Coast. They're stocking ambulances and stowing gear away now so that they can leave at a moment's notice. And this isn't a typical EMT shift. Your shift is not 12 hours long now. Now it's, it starts and it never stops until you get back here. Um, so you're wet, you're tired, you're cold. And the workers could go up to 36 hours on a shift. They'll be working with hospital and nursing home patients and treating injuries of other EMS workers there. Consumers Energy crews doing all they can to help out, too. A group from each of the Saginaw Bay City, Alma, and Standish operations have headed to the company's corporate offices in Jackson. From there, they'll head to Albany, New York, to help with utility needs there. Consumers anticipates crews could be there for three weeks. And you can track Irene's path with an interactive map on our website. Just go to the headline section of WNEM.com. A very different picture coming out tonight after the closing arguments in the assault trial of a Pinconning man. Bay County prosecutors say Stanley Milostan shot Amy Burrio in March of last year and then called it self-defense to avoid a murder charge. Burrio testified she had sex with him in exchange for money and drugs and he shot her because she could not pay. An investigator still searching tonight for the person who torched a mobile office at the future state police post. It happened just after midnight on August 14th on the north side of Salzburg Road in Bay City. The construction site will eventually be the home of a 12,000 square foot police post and home to 55 troopers. Witnesses say they saw a man in his 20s fleeing the scene. If you do have any information, you are asked to please call the arson hotline. It is 844 arson. That is 844 arson. A live look tonight over downtown Flint where thousands of runners are preparing for all of tomorrow's big races. It can't be all running and no fun though, so the participants are getting down 80 style. WNEM TV 5's Evan Beach is live and local in downtown Flint, hopefully with his leg warmers on. What do you say, Evan? Hey guys, uh, well obviously tomorrow is race day, tonight is party time and we've got stepping back in time to the 80s for an 80s party and right now I'm here with Tammy Harchick of the Garabella Salon and she's doing 80s style hairstyles for uh, many people for free. Uh, tell, tell me about uh, what you're doing here. Well, we're down here for the 80s fest. We're doing 80s hair for free for everybody. Come on down, it's amazing. Now, how many years have you been doing this? This is the second year of the 80s Fest, and this is the second year that we've helped sponsor it. What's the uh, craziest hairstyle that you've done so far? Any, anything uh, real crazy that you've got going on? Anything big and crimped. 
Now, obviously, you're all dressed up 80s style. Uh, tell me about your wardrobe here. Um, this is my prom dress from my sophomore year and my necklace I had when I was a child. Uh, a lot more 80s things going on. We've got uh, we've had some roller skaters out here. Ronald McDonald, uh, Star Wars, Starship Troopers, uh, a lot of action going on down here. I'm sure it's going to be a fun time. We also got the pasta party for all the runners tomorrow. Get a good pasta meal. Very good for uh, for their running for tomorrow. Uh, come come on down here tonight in Flint. But for now, live in Flint, Evan Beach, TV5 News. WNEM TV5 News still ahead. Looking for a job? The healthcare industry could be the best place to start your new career. Find out which jobs are booming. Local students get the chance to head back to school in head to toe style, and it's all thanks to the United Way. A happy homecoming tonight for even more of Mid Michigan's service members after months overseas. You're watching TV5 News at 6, serving Breckenridge, Lapeer, Akron, and your hometown too. It is coverage you can count on. We'll be right back. Mid Michigan's number one six o'clock news, WNAM TV5 News. Coverage you can count on.